potential ceasefire in Gaza. Trump and Biden visit the southern border. Senate Minority Leader Mitch McConnell announces his retirement. And today we'll be talking about real estate. Today we will be talking about the Trump and Biden administration. Hold on. Whenever I do these teases, am I supposed to be looking at one or two? Okay. My bad, y'all. You got it, Derek. I messed up anyway, so it's fine. <laughs> okay, I'm sorry. Should be three. Yeah, that was rough. I'm sorry. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, yeah, but I thought we were on two. Mike, Trump and Biden visit the southern border. Ew, it's weird. Like, all that echoing. Very bad. Okay. Should I switch off the mic? Hmm. Yeah, my name's Derek Jones. My name's Derek Jones. Today we'll be talking about the South Carolina primaries and the Michigan presidential primary, the results with Jaquan and Levi Olt. And then we will also be talking about, sorry, is it good? Good, okay. Let's go guys, we got this. It's gonna be a good show. Primary. Michigan presidential primary results. A potential ceasefire in Gaza. Trump and Biden visit the southern border. Senate Minority Leader Mitch McConnell announces his retirement. And today on Real Talk, we will be discussing with Levi Olt and Shaquan Logan about the South Carolina primary, Michigan presidential primary results, and also the Trump fraud case. So we're going into uh, these stories. Um, I'm really excited. I'm Samuel Gailey. Welcome back to Real Talk 2024. I'm Kendall Pearson. And I'm Samuel Gailey. Over 10,000 angry Polish farmers gathered in front of the Parliament and Warsaw's landmark palace of science and culture on Tuesday. The farmers are demanding that authorities meet their demands, which include abandoning restrictions on agriculture pla planned under the EU's Green Deal climate packaging and placing tougher restrictions on agricultural imports from Ukraine. Polish farmers have been blocked off the border of Slovakia, which they say is being used to bring Ukrainian produce to Poland. Today, they also plan to blockade the border they share with Lithuania. Prime Minister Donald Tusk said that he heard the farmers' demands and vowed to take action to address, among other things, trade with Ukraine. He said, quote, we are realistic about the impacts of the EU's free trade decision with Ukraine, which negatively affects our, our markets. While waving Polish flags, the farmers have created banners that say statements such as, quote, without us, you'll be hungry, naked, and sober, and I am a farmer, not a slave, end quote. So far, the protest has been peaceful. President Joe Biden is hoping for a ceasefire by next Monday on the ongoing Israeli-Hamas conflict in Gaza. 
The proposed pause would also allow for the release of dozens of captives held by Hamas in return for hundreds of Palestinian prisoners held by Israel. Israel has agreed to halt military activities in Gaza for the Muslim holy month of Ramadan to, quote, give us time to get all the hostages out, which is likely to begin on March 10th and end on April 9th. It's said that a comment made by Biden could be aimed at voters in the state of Michigan because of the presidential primary that was held there on Tuesday. There's over 300,000 Muslim and Arab Americans in Michigan, and they have pledged to vote uncommitted on their, ballot, on their ballots in protest of Biden's support for Israel. In November, there was a short-lived ceasefire which released more than 100 captives, while over 132 captives still remain in Gaza, according to Israeli officials. A member of the U.S. Air Force is in critical condition after he set himself on fire outside the Israeli embassy in Washington, D.C. An active duty member of the U.S. Air Force who set himself on fire outside the Israeli embassy in Washington, D.C. on Sunday has died, according to authorities. Aaron Bushnell, 25, of San Antonio, Texas, said in the video of the innocent incident obtained by CNN that he would, quote, no longer be comp complicated in genocide and quoted that his suffering was minimal compared to that of Palestinians as a human humanitarian crisis persists in Gaza. He then sets the recording device on the ground before pouring an unknown liquid over himself and igniting it while yelling free Palestine repeatedly. He eventually collapses as police officers rush to douse the flames with fire extinguishers. Bushnell's identity was confirmed by MPD and Rose Riley, a spokesperson for the U.S. Air Force, said he was an active duty airman. Additionally, details will be provided after next of kin notifications are completed, the Air Force said. As the Hamas-Israeli war continues, the world is trying to uh, aid Gaza with supplies and relief. According to the Commissioner General of the United Nations Relief and Works Agency for Palestinian Refugees on Monday, humanitarian and supplies entering Gaza has decreased by 50% since January. In a post, Felipe Larazzini stated aid was, not, well, aid was supposed to increase, not decrease, to address the huge number of 2 million Palestinians in desperate living conditions. He attributed the fallen assistance delivery and what he termed the collapse of civil order to a number of factors, including a lack of political will, frequent closure of crossing points, and lack of security as a result of military operations. Humanitarian and aid have been routinely barred from reaching Gaza through Israel's Karim Shalom crossing by Israeli protesters who claim that aid should not enter as long as Hamas is holding hostages. On February 5th, Israeli forces opened fire on a United Nations convoy in central Gaza, transporting essential food and supplies afterward. The vehicles were prevented from going further north by Israeli forces. The World Food Program said February 20th that it has stopped sending the supplies to northern Gaza, citing complete chaos and violence due to the collapse of civil order in the region where large groups of hungry people attempted to board the organization's trucks and take their supplies. According to Lazzarini, UN organizations have been warning the world of impending danger and starvation and pleading for more access because the people need much needed help. On Thursday, both President Joe Biden and former President Donald Trump visited the southern border where they both spoke on the issue saying that the crisis needs addressing. CNN Rosa Flores reports. Eagle Pass resident Enriqueta Diaz couldn't be more pleased with the dueling border appearances from both President Joe Biden and former President Donald Trump. Yes. <laughs> That's your reaction? Yes. <laughs> she says she's voting for Trump this election <laughs> and hopes the former president's visit to her hometown sends a much needed message. Texas is very secure. Eagle Pass is where Texas Governor Greg Abbott deployed the controversial border buoys and took over a public park by putting up razor wire, guarding it with armed Texas National Guard soldiers and kicking out Border Patrol. It's the park Trump toured and where he was briefed by Texas authorities. The United States is being overrun by the Biden migrant crime. It's a new form of a vicious violation to our country. It's migrant crime. Some Eagle Pass residents gathered in protest asking that Trump leave their town. I hate that you're going to spew today. You're not welcome in this community. Several hundred miles downriver, President Joe Biden in Brownsville today. Biden meeting with Border Patrol agents, law enforcement, and local leaders as he pushes for a bipartisan immigration deal. It's time to step up. 
provide them with significantly more personnel and capability. We also need more immigration judges. The last time a Biden visited the Brownsville area, it was election season 2019. At the time, Jill Biden visited a migrant camp across the border in Matamoros, Mexico, as her husband promised humane border policies. Some in Brownsville took to the streets today to remind him of those promises. Biden's job on the border could get exponentially more complicated. The plaintiffs in a federal lawsuit are asking a judge to rule that migrant children and their families who have just crossed the border into Southern California and are waiting in makeshift camps to be transported for immigration processing are actually in federal custody. Attorney Neha Desai says the conditions are deplorable. Some migrant children have waited outside for days in the cold with no food. Children have had no choice but to take refuge in overflowing porta potties to sleep in tarps littered with trash, all to just avoid the freezing rain. CNN reached out to U.S. Customs and Border Protection for comment. Back in Eagle Pass, Diaz, the hardcore Trump supporter, Tell me how you really feel about it. <laughs> says that like Trump, Biden is also politicking on the border. I don't like his policies, but I respect them. It's an honor to have the president of the United States visit your community. I don't care what party you are. Senate Minority Leader Mitch McConnell will step down as the leader of the Republican Conference in November, ending his long-time, longest-serving leader in the Senate history. President Biden told reporters he's sorry to hear that McConnell is stepping down and praised him for his honesty. Biden and McConnell have a long-standing relationship due to their decades in the Senate. McConnell announced his decision to leave his leadership post in a speech on the Senate floor today. He'll serve out the remainder of his term, which ends January 2027. Trump's still in the headlines this week as he continues to battle his civil fraud judgment. The $464 million civil fraud judgment against former President Trump, his adult, his adult sons, and two former Trump Organization official, officials are appealed. On Friday, the official ruling in the case of the New York Attorney General was announced by Judge Arthur and Gorion. Including interest payments, the former president is personally on, on the hook for $454 million. They were found liable of fraud, conspiracy, and making false financial statements earlier this month. They faced accusations of manipulating real estate asset values in order to obtain more favorable loan and insurance rates. The first working day following the official judgment on Monday, the, Trump, the Trumps filed a notice of appeal within the court. Eyes are still on Trump going into this week. Stay with us as we're going to be joining our co-anchor, Derek, with our guests. So stay with us here on Real Talk. How about those nuggets this year, Jace? It sounds like a chip to me. They ain't going back to back. Ain't no one getting past Boston. They got a super team, man. All right, Jace, check up. This is the last call. Jace and I head to head on football, baseball, basketball, and everything UND. Mondays, 6 p.m. on UND TV on YouTube and Xfinity Stream Channel 1096. For actual athletes, watch UND TV's live sports broadcast on GLVCSN and YouTube. There's often a moment when you're helping somebody with math where they just suddenly get over that little barrier and they get it. It's a nice aha moment, and I really like 
being involved in helping students achieve that moment. And we do get a lot of those here in the tutoring lab. Welcome back to Real Talk 2024, and we're here with Levi Olt and Shaquan Logan. Shaquan and Levi, how are you guys doing today? Pretty good. Yeah, I'm doing actually Pretty really good. good. Really good. I, miss the, I miss the nice weather we've been having, though, so. You know, for real, the yeah. weather's been a little shaky, you know, with Indiana, yeah. it's going oh, up God. and down. Oh my one gosh. One moment it's summer, one moment it's freezing cold yes. winter. Indiana is so bipolar. One moment it's up in the 80s, and then the next day it's in the 20s, practically, so, yeah. 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 All right, we're just gonna dive straight in with the South Carolina primary results. Nikki Haley lost with a 39%, uh, and Donald Trump had what it says, 59.8 by Associated Press, and she's still continuing to fight on. I don't know exactly why. I don't know if she's trying to be VP. I feel like she's overstaying her welcome. Uh, if that's the case, what do you guys have any comments on that? Um, yeah, no, um, absolutely. Um, she has lost every single primary contest that she has entered in. So, and, and many, many pundits have said, and have sort of how, why is she in the race? There is no viable, op, there's no viable pathway for her to win the nomination. So why is she continuing to fight? Well, part of that is because of the money she is still getting. Without the money, she wouldn't be able to run. Um, but actually last week, one of her biggest donors, the Koch brothers, withdrew their money support from her campaign. So I think it might start to signal to other donors that she, does, uh, she doesn't have a winning chance anymore. Um, but she has said that she's going to stay in until Super Tuesday. So after that contest, maybe she'll drop out, but it's anyone's guess, really. Yeah, going off what Le uh, Levi had just said, uh, uh, she, she has lost every primary that she's been against uh, Trump. And the question really is, like, why does she still run? I mean. You know, like how he just said, um, somebody, a donor, had just took away their money because she keeps losing. And, you know, we don't know what her goal is. I mean, maybe she is trying to be VP. Maybe she is trying to still, you know, give that fighting chance. But um, we don't really know where this will go. That's because with VP candidates, usually they drop out and usually support Trump, but she keeps fighting him, she keeps irritating fighting, yeah. him. Exactly. And that's usually not what a VP and we, candidate Yeah, and yeah. Trump, especially after what happened with Mike Pence and how he yeah. kind of went against Trump and uh, uh, certifying the election of 2020, um, he, above all, he wants someone that's going to be absolutely loyal to him. And the fact that Nikki Haley has stayed in this campaign has pretty much all but shut her out of that, of trying to get the VP position. Right. So I don't think that um, she can really even, I don't think she wants to be VP to um, Donald Trump. And I don't think there's no way that, um, Nikki, uh, that Donald Trump will pick Nikki Haley to be his yeah. VP. Yeah, like I, I said, above so all, that. loyalty for Trump. So with that being said, going to Trump with his fraud case, uh, Donald Trump currently owes Thirty three hundred fifty five million uh, about lying about his wealth because of what he did and his sons did on tax evasion, mm -hmm. and then that's according to AP Associated Press, and then he also owes E. Jean Carroll eighty three point eight million dollars. Yes, and and with E. J. Carroll, that was um, he was found liable of sexual assault and defamation. Mm -hmm. um, so, yep. and but I will say, uh, w with the results of the elections, it's really shown that most primary Republican voters don't care. Um, it doesn't matter how many felonies, because right now Trump has um, uh, been charged with uh, 91 ac accounts of felony. Um, and so that really signals to us pundits <laughs> that like to you know, try to guess on these things that voters just don't care really. And it's kind of striking to think that uh, the, the party of law and order is somehow supporting a candidate that has already been held liable of these and, and held accountable for these, like you said, um, the, the $400 million case that he was found to be um, uh, inflating his business assets. These are, some, these are crimes that the Republican nominee, the presumptive nominee has committed and it won't have any, won't have any bearing on the election, at least in the, in the primary election. Um, I wanted to say that Trump recently bid that to freeze $460 Four hundred sixty-four million dollars, and the judge denied it mm -hmm. recently. Um, and I feel like that 
is tying back to what Levi had just said on the fact that like it's just gonna keep getting worse from here. I mean, it's not gonna affect his primaries or anything, but it's just gonna get, keep getting worse. I mean, and we were just talking about this, me and Levi, but we don't think that he has the money to pay yes. these, these, for these offensive crimes. I mean, he, well, it, it was recently four indictment charges that he recently just got. So I don't know what he's gonna do about that, but I do know that in the meantime, I, I think it's gonna get worse for him. And that's absolutely a great point. Um, last year, uh, the New York Times said that he probably only has $400 million in liquid yeah, assets. absolutely. If, and the only way he could increase the amount of money he has would be to either sell his properties, do, take on other mortgages. Yeah. Um, so really, right now, Trump doesn't necessarily have all the cash to, to, to put up for all these cases. So, and there, there's obviously appeals that he's going through. He's gonna to try to prolong it as long as possible. Yeah. Um, but even in these defamation lawsuits and in the most recent New York one that he has to pay 400 million to, um, he still has to put the money up for that. Even if there's an appeal process, he mm -hmm. still has to say, hey, either I have the money and put it, and, and put it up you know, to front it. So it's, uh, it's gonna be a real challenge to see how he's gonna pay for that. Either um, he might try to do it through his PACs or through you know, funding with his supporters, but then that runs into some very questionable legal questions of if he's allowed to do that. So it's gonna be very interesting to see how he's gonna pay that off. Yeah, that kind of ties back into the um, the whole. They froze his the they they decided not to freeze the 464 million bid that he um, proposed to the judge uh, because they said that he would have to sell some of his properties. Mm -hmm. The lawyers had said that his lawyer said that he would have to sell some of his properties, um, and the lawyers were like, no basically, so that's why. The, but the I think it's so there. funny that the prosecutor yeah. <laughs> did say yeah. that he that they would go after his assets in New York yep, if he did. does not have the money, like saying, we will force you to, to sell off your, you know, the big Trump, you know, hotel that every, that he's, you know, known for with the big Trump letters on it. So, yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah, that could be quite uh, a funny situation. Yeah, I was going to say, because it seems like he's trying to pull funds from everywhere he can. Yeah. That's the original reason why he was uh, going for posting a bond, mm -hmm. because he couldn't post it with the original case ruling. So then, like, he's raised for his federal election campaign. The federal election campaign says that he's raised at least $88 billion. Four hundred seventy-eight thousand nine hundred eighty-seven and fifty-three cents, and he spent fifty-seven million nine hundred ninety thousand two hundred forty-seven and seventy-six cents. But it doesn't say where or why he's spending them. It doesn't say or categorize how he's spending them. Mm -hmm. So I'm assuming, and it's wrong for me to assume, but I'm assuming it's being used towards his Kate course of peace. Right. And also, he's also uh, putting up. Three hundred ninety-nine dollars on those gold shoes that he shares. Oh yeah. So, yes. mm, right, so right, right, right. yeah, yeah. So I see he's trying to grab all this money because he has until March twenty-fifth to do so mm -hmm. to pay this payment, or else they exactly. won't be um, grabbing his assets. Yes, yeah. exactly. Yes, exactly. That's a very good point. Um, and uh, yeah, and with those shoes, and those are just the funniest. <laughs> I mean, I feel like with his with the money that you had just mentioned, um, like you said, like how you said, it is going towards his his case. I mean, what other, you know, aspects or um, spending would you spend that money on other than those four indictments that you just got? Other than probably like his campaign, which yeah. he's probably getting back from that. Yeah, and listen, I don't think we can like assume that he's doing that, but yeah. it's, it's, it's probable that he may be doing that. Um, but without a doubt, I think that that's definitely going to be looked into coming, you know, Absolutely. within future prosecutors and probably already is being looked into to make sure that all those funds that he's getting is being put uh, into, you know, legal causes like campaigning, like as it should be, instead of his legal fines. I thought it was quite interesting, though. Um, Ron DeSantis, after dropping out, was yeah. still able to take shots, though, or and fire back against Trump because yeah. Florida lawmakers uh, tried to pass a law that would actually pay for Trump's legal fees, all of it, which would be, you know, mil hundreds of millions of dollars for the, the Florida, uh, the, the Flor Flor Floridians. Um, yeah. Their tax, uh, for, uh, and that would put that burden on them. But DeSantis said, which I thought kind of getting back to Trump, he will veto that, which I thought was kind of striking that even though he dropped out and endorsed Trump, he was still able to kind of take a shot back at him. Yeah. It seems like the Attorney General, their strategy is to literally try to pin some type of criminal case on him. Now, the fraud case would be charged as a civic case, but the criminal case I am thinking of is the Insurrection Day, January 6th. 
could he possibly be charged with a criminal case? Absolutely. Um, he could possibly get charged with that. I don't think that it's up for discussion on how many cases that he can get. I mean, I mean, if you look at the if you look at the news recently, he's been in and out of court, and he's been in and out of um, the media for a while, and. The thing is with, with Trump, the criminal case that you had just mentioned, it's possible that that might solidify his um, his running for president, as in like, you know, he might not be able to go further than what he already is. I mean, if they, if they actually go through with it, which we don't know yet, but if they do, then it might actually, you know, hurt him in the long run. And, and some of that too will be dictated because of the presidential immunity case that's going through the legal process yeah. now and that the Supreme Court has actually um, has agreed to bring that up. A lot of that will be determined by what they rule on of if the, does the president have absolute immunity while yeah. in office from any type of proceedings or you know from, from wrongful acts that he may have done, which it seems kind of crazy to kind think crazy, that yeah that there could be any other answer than absolutely the president should be held accountable for what they do in office. If they do something illegal, then they should be held, um, they should be held accountable for that. Exactly. So I think that we should really look for that decision when that comes out, whenever it comes out. Absolutely. And then that will determine um, really to what degree can Trump be held accountable for those actions like inciting an insurrection. Well, thank you both for having this discussion with me, yeah, Sam. Yeah, of course. Um, right after this, we will be going back to the anchor desk with Kendall. Thank you so much. Thank you. is to help with the development and growth, the self-efficiency and self-sufficiency of the near northwest side of Indianapolis. When the double eights closed in the area that left the near northwest side a food desert. So, Brandon Cosby, the executive director of Flinter House, started with the Flinter House Farms, where they grow fresh produce organically for the neighborhood around. And then later on down the line, Cleo's came about. So we're here to help with the sustainability of getting fresh food at cheap prices to the locals around. Black owned, black ran. That's the gist of Cleo's for the most part. For real talk I'm here with Kendall and Sam so what did you guys think about the interview I thought it was a really good interview um, the one thing I did want to bring up was with Nikki Haley as, and the probability that she might run as an independent yeah which has only been done like one other time but I haven't seen a lot about that and I know that she mentioned briefly about running as an independent so I just kind of want to talk about that a little bit because it wasn't touched on really throughout mm -hmm. the yeah, I was going to say, for the South Carolina primary and the Michigan presidential primary, the delegates that she did win was mostly through independent voters. Mm -hmm. Now, she got four delegates, which are the people who are going to be, like, on her side when it comes down to Electoral College, the ones who have pledged to her allegiance. But that could also change throughout the course of the election like it did with Hillary Clinton versus Yeah. Trump. 
Independents rarely win these races anyways. I think uh, Haley is sort of basing her next moves off of Trump not being able to run. Mm -hmm. And so she's sort of staying in the second strategically in case the court finds Trump uh, can't, can't run. So I, I think Haley's doing this kind of strategically trying to test the waters because, you know, like if Trump does win out, does she win as an independent? I don't think so. I yeah. think it's good for her PR and I think it's good for mm -hmm. publicity for her. But I, I mean, right now, I think she's going to stay put, especially with all these allegations against Trump. Yeah. I did want to talk about, too, like um, the way the voters are like divided between Trump and um, I almost said Hillary <laughs> and Nikki yeah. Haley. Mm -hmm. um, so after the South Carolina primary, I did a lot of research because I can't believe Nikki lost in her own state. Yeah. I mean, I think we all saw it's, it coming, but it, I mean. I didn't see it coming. Really? I thought maybe she would have had more voters on her side since it's South Carolina yeah. where she governed. Mm -hmm. But apparently that wasn't the case to see I the know. result of 39%. Yeah. I was like, wow. Yeah. It, it was shocking. It was very shocking. But so. one thing I wanted to ask um, our guests, Levi and Shaquan, was I saw that um, Trump, he has more success with voters between the ages of 18 and 29, mm -hmm. while Nikki, it is between the ages of 30 and 69. Uh, it, that was based off the South Carolina primary election as well as Michigan. Mm -hmm. I just thought that was really interesting. Do you maybe have like a theory as to why that is? Would you, Actually, do you want to go? Yeah. <laughs> I have no idea. Uh, I, I, think, I think the younger generation is more important, especially going mm -hmm. forward and anything. Because, I mean, if, you're honest, if we're honest here, adults are good. They're getting older. Mm -hmm. um, capturing the next generation of supporters is really good. Because, I mean, that's when ide ideologies are shaped. That's when I ideas become sort of solid in someone's mind, especially in the ages of between 18 and 25. I think that's sort of like who you become, who you are. And, like, who do you support? Well, I wouldn't say support, but who, do, who would you vote for or mm -hmm. stuff like that. So I think that's really huge for Trump because that's the people that he needs to, to target, especially in the future and right now. And he's done that in one state, so let's see what he can do in the others. Yeah, and speaking of like young voters, young politicians is mm -hmm. also something that might be coming in the future with the retirement of Mitch McConnell. Um, with his health being questioned, with him having senior moments, mm -hmm. and then them also saying Biden's also doing the same. The question I wanted to ask so bad, but I didn't have the chance to get yeah. to, was because Biden is basically incumbent for the um, primary election for the Democrats, um, is he in good health and standing? Is any of our political leaders in good health and standing that are above that age limit mm -hmm. of 80 and above? Because as you get older, you start to have more cognitive issues. Is it, are they able to do that? Yeah. I mean, I mean, I'm 20, 22, about to be 23. I, I'm, I'm starting to have some of those issues. Oh, really? So it's going to be, it's going to be interesting, definitely in the future to, uh, to see everything. Yeah. So. Well, thank you for joining us. UND TV will be back on Monday for Last Call. Be sure to check out our other shows on YouTube, Xfinity Channel 190, 1096. I'm Derek Jones. I'm Samuel Gailey. And I'm Kendall Pearson. Have a great, have a great weekend and a great night. <laughs>